And let's uh, let you break the tie, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> recession or no a, recession by 2020? That was a great um, series of clips there. Um, but I think one of the challenges is around the timing. Most people would agree at some point the business cycle is likely to end. A recession will come. The question is when. And I think the end of last year, there seemed to be this consensus coming around that it was going to be in 2019. And that no longer seems to be what's in the consensus. And I think rightfully so. We don't think a recession is coming in 2019. But as you look further, into 2020, into 2021, when you start to actually see an economy that has overheated a bit, where growth has run significantly above um, for a period of time where you start to have ability to pull back, you have, an, you have areas of the economy that could actually contract in a normal recession. Um, that's not this year, but as you look forward, it could start to paint that picture. And the question uh, for you, Michael, is what's actually baked in? Because earnings estimates for the 2019 continue to come down, but now they've kind of leveled off, not having really moved so far this week. What's baked in? What has more downside? Can we agree that like you could find a recessionary signal anywhere you look? You can take some eighth derivative of a manufacturing <laughs> index and you're going to find slowing growth in everywhere around the world. So we're not on recession watch. I'm not on recession watch. What's baked in? I think slowing is baked in. Like we know that earnings, the tailwind from the tax reform is going to is going to end. We know that earnings are going to slow. The market is pricing that in right now. What does the depth of the earnings recession look like? Is it shallow? Is it is it a close skim to the ground and then back up? That seems to me like the right case. I mean, we had a massive of earnings recession in, in uh, 15 and 16, there was no economic recession there. So I get the worries, I understand, but I just don't think they're, they don't make a lot of sense right so, here, right now. So then, Michael, if you flip it then, what areas are pricing in sort of a steeper recession that shouldn't be? Where's the, where's the opportunity? Uh, you know, I think the the, uh, the industrial sector is starting to, starting, to, starting to pull that off. You look at the sector that's done the best this year, it's industrials. Look at the XLI. I think industrials at the end of last year thought that a global manufacturing industrial recession was upon us. And it's starting to pull that off. I think you're starting to see that mm -hmm. peeled back a little bit. Because things are, like I said, things are better. Things are not as bad as the absolute Christmas Eve massacre that I sat through. So, Michelle, same sort of question to you in this yeah. sense. If he's right that it's not a recession, it'll just a slowdown, a gradual yeah. slowdown in the economy. That's what we see for the next couple of years or so. Uh, what does that say about the economy? Which parts will benefit from that environment and which will really get hurt the worst? Yeah, so I think you have to speak about where the risk factors are coming from. So the reason, as Mike said, that the industrial space got hit in the beginning of the year is because the concern about the business cycle was due to what was happening abroad. It was the idea that the manufacturing sector was going to weaken, global growth was weakened, weakened, trade volumes were going to weaken. We saw a, a, a negative sign in the manufacturing ISM in December as well, which added to that fear. Um, but if that is indeed starting to mitigate, if those risks are calming down, down a bit, then you probably do have some opportunity in the more cyclical parts of the economy to see some, some growth because of that's where the area where there was um, the most concern on the downside. Um, and then when you focus more on the domestic parts of the economy, the consumer, um, you know, purely the household sector, that's been pretty robust throughout this cycle. I mean, if you think about driving the consumer right now, you have wage growth picking up, a tight labor market, um, household balance sheets that still look well supported. So as long as we get past some of these risk factors from abroad that impact more cyclical manufacturing parts of our economy, I think you end up seeing a pretty decent backdrop.